Well, welcome to this week in Eastern United States. As I'm recording this, it's Friday afternoon, a few minutes after four, and we are in Dayton, Tennessee. This first picture of us uh, was taken a week ago. We were at a rest stop in Virginia. Was it Virginia? Yeah. And uh, we had a picnic lunch. And I got a mile in there, and two miles later, so I got at least three that day. After a bit more driving, we were on our way to Lexington, Virginia, actually Gladstone, or Amherst, where Matt and Chris and the kids live. We stop in Buena Vista when we go through. We could go through... Bedford and Lexington, but it's so trafficy and it's so busy. What? What? Not Lexington, it's Lynchburg. Did I say Lexington? Yeah, both times. Oh. Well, it should be Lynchburg. And here we are then instead going through Buena Vista, which means, of course, beautiful view. And we stop at a cemetery there. And it's just such a beautiful place. Jan wanted to get some pictures. And we always park under that tree, and then we come over to this place. Because right here is the BYRD bird tombstone. My Aunt Violet and Uncle Frank. Aunt Violet was a sister to my father. Their mother is buried under the tombstone that is diagonal to the right and ahead. Here it is. I was 10 years old when we drove to this place. I remember it. And we attended the funeral service. I believe it was October, mid-October. The next scene, we are at Matt and Krista's, our son and his wife and two kids. This is looking off from the porch, the front deck, and this is off looking in another direction at the solar panels. On our walk down to the road, daily we would walk down there, do a few laps at the bottom, from side to side, because there were two exits where it split at the bottom. And we are better than three quarters of a mile up from the road to their place. You better know where you're going if you're going to try and find this. Back looking down from the deck, you can't see the fourth horse. There are four of them. But on the other side of the persimmon tree, is that right? Yep. Persimmon tree. And it was loaded. Sabbath morning, waiting to leave for Sabbath school and church. We arrived at the Lynchburg Church. And this is Pastor Geraldo Alfa Alonso. Geraldo Alonso. And I'm sorry? Isn't it Alfonso? Alfonso? Okay. So... He was doing, he's working on his doctorate, pastoring the church, and uh, so he's doing some last minute screen things for the, because he puts it on the screen each Sabbath. Sabbath school. What's the guy's name? Oh. Lorenz. Lorenz. Yeah, teaching the lesson. Enjoyable. On the left here is Doug. He's married to Ursula. And the two of them were in Canada. I believe he was the treasurer of the Saskatchewan Conference, Seventh-day Adventist Conference, during the Sabbath school class. We were talking about the Blessed Hope. And at the very end, Alonzo said, Lorenz said, I'm not doing too well, am I? Lorenz said, hey, let's go on a field trip. Follow me. 
So we got up reluctantly, not well, knowing where we were going, walked down to the end of the hallway out of the sanctuary and burst in upon the youth class that was just getting ready to close with prayer so that we could see this painting of Nathan Green. Entitled, The Blessed Hope. Interesting to note, there is no man-made items in this picture, this painting. It's all natural. The great rainbow, the angels, Jesus at his second coming. Back in the church service. When it was time for the children's story, I slipped up to get a little video of the piano player. So I enjoyed that. He, he does well. Sabbath after lunch, we were relaxing, and it was decided we would go out to Piney Creek, a, a nice place to take a hike. I got a picture of this old building. I don't know how old it is, but it's not young, that's for sure. And here is Piney Creek, uh, one of the last times, or a previous time anyway, we had a picnic lunch here beside Piney Creek. And then we were done with our walk, and Kaylee and Logan were down with the water. Krista had been down with them. And it was just a very pleasant day on that Sabbath afternoon. I decided I would go down and take these pictures, which I did. And this is a panoramic view, and I'm panning down to the other end of this picture, to the left, up on the bridge, Matt, Krista, Jan, along with Krista's parents, Gary and Cindy, were watching. And then I decided to leave this little island and go back and you can see a large rock there it is on an angle it's sharp on one edge and I thought I could easily step on it and then on across to the other side and when I stepped onto it I lost my balance I tried my best to regain it uh, to no good and down I went after going to Lynchburg General Hospital, uh, waiting there for a bit, large room, uh, full of patients. They first took me in, put some ice on it, took my vitals, etc. The two guys that took care of us, uh, one reminded us of little Chad, and the other uh, <laughs> was little Chad, except it wasn't. Uh, anyway, that's... Uh, that's what I looked like that night. We stopped at a CVS and I got a brace for it. Uh, I should back up a little bit here. So while we, while I was laying there, uh, I wasn't moving. I knew I wasn't well. And um, Matt came down. He said, I'm here to help. What should I do? And I said, I need a, 
I need a stick. And by that time, Logan was there, and he grabbed a stick and kind of shaped it a little bit, breaking off some little branches. And I slapped it against my wrist, and Jan got down there, and she took her handkerchief and tied it around there, making a splint. And then Matt played the part of the Incredible Hulk and just deadlifted me, picked me up, and put me on my feet. And for those of you that know him, he's a big guy. Uh, I was lightheaded, sat down on a log there, got a little blood flowing to my brain, and then we made our way out. Ended up then at Lynchburg General Hospital. Then later that night, they didn't do anything for me. They were willing to, but we realized it was going to be a very long wait. In the meantime, was it Matt who did the searching and discovered that uh, Ortho, Virginia, or is it Virginia Ortho? Virginia Ortho and Krista, because that's okay. where took Kaylee when she broke her arm. Yeah, so Krista went online and discovered that Virginia Ortho opened the next morning at 10 a.m., and uh, previously Kaylee had broke her arm, and Virginia Ortho said, you know, it only caused you more pain going to the generalist. So anyway, we just cut it short, left Lynchburg General, and we went to Virginia Ortho the next morning. So I, that picture's still Saturday night. You can see I'm looking a bit tired, and there is a low-grade pain. Next morning, I left with my hand in a splint that was made just for me. I had had x-rays. getting a page out, but it's not for our fire department. It's a commercial fire alarm. So if you hear that going off in the background, that's what it is. So here I am at Virginia Ortho and moving along. There was a picture of my hand. I took it out of the brace. I went and had it x-rayed. If you look under my, what looks like my left hand and is, you can see as that brace is coming off oh, what my arm was looking like. Monday, we were at Grandparents Day. When I sent this picture to Krista, she said, did you tell everybody you were taking a picture? And I sent back and said, no, every man for himself. It was all I could do to get my camera in place and shoot it. So here is a better picture of all of us, Gary and Cindy Collins and... There we are, Jan and I, with our grandson. The next day was Grandparents' Day with Kaylee, and we went out to eat. I should back up and say a word uh, about Onward Christian, Christian Academy. Academy, Grandparents' Day. Onward Academy is a support school that helps homeschoolers. You go to school two days a week. They offer additional things, instruments. Um, Logan is taking trumpet. He took trombone. He's taking trumpet. Uh, Kaylee is in her first year of French. No, I'm sorry, Spanish. And guitar. And guitar. Um, and then there are some other general topics. The other three days of the week... Uh, they are at home, and Krista teaches them, so she covers their Bible lessons, etc. But it's a Christian-based school, uh, very Christ-centered in their approach, kind, gentle, um, traditional Christian values, and uh, it's, a, it's a good program, a quality program. They put together the curriculum so that mom or dad, whoever's at home teaching three days of the week, uh, can just follow along. And they know, of course, exactly what the material is. The students are following because mom and dad are doing that. So here we are. We went to a Mexican restaurant. And then here today, back in Dayton, Tennessee, 
I, they took the splint off, and it was wonderful to be able to scratch my arm after having been cut, uh, covered up all week. And then they put this creature on there. This is an interesting thing. Um, they brought it into the room. It was warm, not hot. Formed it around my arm. It looked like it was... Um, like it reminded me of a turtle shell, just the top part of it. But then it closed around and formed around until it was proper. Uh, put the Velcro straps in place. And then they had a ace bandage that was sitting in ice water. When this cast was in place, then they took that ace bandage that was very cold and wrapped this uh, cast up and that's what set it and hardened it so I'm able to take a shower with it get it wet I do need to dry it off with a cool blow dryer uh, every day some people might be saying why me and I was actually saying thank you Lord because you know what's best you know what's good and you allowed it to happen nobody can get to God's children unless they get through God even some awful, awful, terrible things happen in life. But Jesus experienced awful, awful, terrible things as well. As we are studying in our Sabbath school lesson this week. So thank you for letting me ramble and just share all of this stuff. God bless and we'll see you again soon.